Hello, and welcome to Humanities Matter, brought to you by Brill. I'm Lee Chung Greco, and this week we'll be looking at key issues in the field of humanities. Today we're speaking with Dr. Daniel Weishet, a lecturer at Hadassah Academic College and a therapist in private practice. His book is Intercultural Friendship, the Case of a Palestinian Bedouin and a Dutch-Israeli Jew. Welcome, Dr. Weishet. Thank you so much for having us. And we're also speaking with his friend, Ahmad Abu Gelia. Ahmad, welcome. So, Dr. Vaishit, first of all, what can we learn from the study of friendship between a Palestinian Bedouin and a Dutch Israeli Jew? And why would there be interest in that study? In this era, there's more contact than ever between people of different cultures. And because of migration, refugees, and intercultural work teams, and that despite COVID-19. Now, these cultural differences cause misunderstanding and possibly tension. I believe that uh, cultural differences, uh, sorry, cultural contact and friendship in specific um, is the way to reduce prejudice and stigma. Um, now, Ahmed and I come from the cultural diverse background and we live on different sides of a divide caused by the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And we would like to show that it's possible to befriend and learn from each other across this divide. And although this is a research based on 26 stories of our friendship, exemplifying cultural differences, it is also um, a form of social activism to make, we try to make a change. So before we dig into some of the questions that you pose in this study, introduce us to Ahmed. Please introduce yourself and tell us who you are. Yeah, okay. I'm uh, Ahmad from Jerusalem. I was born in the uh, desert of Jerusalem, east of Jerusalem. And um, uh, it's, uh, the big one is all culture of Arabian. It's, uh, people, uh, they have a different uh, uh, way in the, the life. Uh, we living in the tent and we going from area to area with our animals. And then we are living uh, in the village, and we go into the schools. Uh, it's like to to watch the life uh, in a different uh, <clears throat> way. And um, I think um, uh, I, we have a, a different uh, way in the speaking Arabic. It's all the accent, and um, I uh, when I uh, I see Daniel, or when I, when I, uh, I meet Daniel, uh, I start to, to learn a uh, different way in the life. And uh, I think uh, Daniel gives me so much to, to know, like how I, I, I kill him. And I think uh, European people are different, uh, different than us, how they look into the things. Ahmed is a Palestinian Bedouin. He was born in the Judean desert and he comes from a Muslim family and he now lives close to Jerusalem. And tell us a little bit about how you both met initially. We actually met in a taxi. Um, that was many years ago. I stopped a taxi on my way home. I looked inside and there was someone in there. And, the tech, and I said to the taxi driver, wait, there's someone in there already. And he said, don't worry, I'll take you both. And um, I thought, what the heck? And I got in a taxi. We started to talk. And after the drive, I invited him in, which is something quite unusual for a, um, for a Jew to invite a Palestinian uh, into his home. And um, from that moment, we became friends. And how long were you friends? And then how did you decide to sort of look at this from an academic perspective? Um, we were friends for, I believe, for five years, for six years, until I thought it was so interesting what's going on between us that I, I'm going to do a research about it. 
And so tell us a little bit about some of the challenges of a cross-cultural friendship like this. So the challenges um, that I investigated were were challenges according to the cultural dimensions of the uh, psychologist Hofstede, um, who have a, has a theory on cultural uh, dimensions, and he mentions four different dimensions, individualism versus cult- collectivism, um, uncertainty, avoidance, masculinity versus femininity, and power distance. Um, and I can give you examples of each of these dimensions. Um, just one of, the, one of the things, let's say, for the individualism, collectivism, um, Ahmed is used to live um, in a community. And when I would like to make an appointment with him, or I used to think that I'd meet him on my on his own. I would set we would set a time, and I said I'll come to meet you, and then I would uh, would meet the whole family or a bunch of friends or whoever. It's a, just a small difference about h- how we live life. Um, whether you live your life in a more individual way or you live your life in a more collect uh, collective way. So. Th- so the second dimension, uh, uncertainty, devoidant, avoidance, the idea of needing certainty. Now, I come from a Western background, and I like to plan things. I like to know things ahead. Um, he doesn't. Things will happen when they happen. And I would go crazy over this not planning, and he would go crazy over my ha- needing to plan anything. Um, so that's a second challenge, just an example of where where things would get difficult between the two of us. On the third dimension of masculinity versus femininity, um, the issue of appearing masculine. I mean, if you are a man, you're supposed to appear in a masculine way. And he would tell me that I would not look masculine enough or... I would not sh- uh, show off str- strong enough um, because in his culture, that is, uh, that is very important to be tough, to be, to be macho. And where, whereas in the culture I, I come from, um, it is it's very different and there's not so much of an emphasis on, on being masculine when, when you're a man. And the last, the last um, dimension that I investigated um, is the power distance. Um, a simple example in his culture, if you have power, you use it. In my culture, you decide on things by consensus. The Dutch are very much known about, for just trying to come to a consensus. Everyone agrees about something. While the, in the environment where he comes from, um, if, if you are the strongest, you decide for the others. And that would be in things like like what to eat or where to go. If we were in his environment, he would just decide without, without caring to ask me what I, I wanted to do. And he thought that was the most appropriate way to do because he was the one in power. I was just going to say, I find that so interesting that you highlight those challenges uh, given the fact that you met in part because you challenge your own cultural norms. You got into the taxi, you invited him into your home, which is something you said is not normal uh, for someone like you to do or someone from your culture to do. Um, Do you think that helped foster a friendship between the two of you because you were acting outside of what's expected? Yes, I would say it's even stronger. Um, If I would not have done so, and there was no way to to get into this friendship. Um, it would have broken up uh, in a much earlier stage. Um, and both of us had to be really very, very flexible and very accepting um, of the other way uh, of thinking. Um, because otherwise, things wouldn't have worked out. They are very... Uh, 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 Everything is in plan and everything is uh, uh, exactly and uh, yeah and uh, 
Daniel, he is a, he is not just a yogi, he is a Jew, and uh, we are part of Palestinian Muslim people. As um, we are living together in, in, uh, in Jerusalem, and the situation you know, between us is a little bit uh, difficult because we looking to Israel, how he she looking to our. Uh, uh, West Bank, like Cuba or something like this, how the people looking. And uh, the politics is difficult, and they are not accepting uh, our friendship uh, good. Um, uh, it's take, uh, take ta- time to my family and my friends to know Daniel, that he's a good man. And um, yeah, we, uh, we I, I, I think this is Europe, Europe uh, uh, culture is different than our culture, not in bad way, in good way, and we can accept a lot of the things, and we we can uh, make our culture uh, uh, rich. Uh, and uh, I think is, is the European we they need uh, a lot of our culture, and it's uh, it's some, something different. I think we need each other. And that seems like a good lesson for friendships, even within cultures, is just be flexible. Right. Um, I I would say a little bit more about that, because it's not just challenges, it's opportunities as well. Intercultural friendship is a major opportunity for personal growth. As most people stick to one culture, um, and this culture develops our thinking, And we create in our head a kind of mental prison. And this intercultural friendship is like a kind of tool to escape from this prison. And through the appreciation of the other culture um, and their way, uh, people in that culture, and their way to deal with day-to-day things, um, you widen your horizon. You just learn to look at the world in a different way. And that's what we did. That's what I did. And that is what my friend did. And that's also... I think the main lesson that we want to to show was this book. The study is obviously focused on two people, you and Ahmad. Uh, you didn't do a huge sample size or study an entire population. I was wondering, reading this, if it's fair to use the two of you as stand-ins for these two cultures. We're actually not stand-ins. We we are not saying that everyone is like us. All people are unique. All friendships are unique. We are an example. We are one way of overcoming intercultural challenges. And I do think, though, that many of the challenges um, that I discuss in the book um, will be recognizable for for many people, and not just for um, for Jews and Palestinians, but also um, for many other people. And because the dimensions are similar, I think I think if all of the people like me and Daniel, if we they accept each other, they, we can make a good peace. And we need to to accept uh, the other. And if he is different, that's that's meaning he is not bad. That is meaning he is more more good to us because he give us. I think. <sighs> And uh, I, I, I respect uh, this friendship. I like it. Dr. Weishit's book is Intercultural Friendship, The Case of a Palestinian Bedouin and a Dutch-Israeli Jew. You are listening to the Humanities Matter podcast. You can find more podcast episodes on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and Google Podcast.